Once again, welcome everybody joining through our live stream for this Mass today. As we continue this time apart from each other, be assured of all my prayers uniting each one of us to Jesus' sacrifice here at the altar. Having just celebrated the greatest mysteries of our faith, the passion, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ during Holy Week, today we conclude the Easter octave, these eight days that we celebrate Easter Day with this Divine Mercy Sunday. Uh, before we entered into Holy Week to celebrate Easter, we were going through a series on St. Ignatius's rules for the discernment of spirits, these 14 trustworthy principles to help us understand how to navigate the ups and downs of the spiritual life, especially when so many things around us seem to be uncertain. So during Lent, we completed the first half of those rules, helping us recognize in the midst of our thoughts, feelings, desires, what's consolations from God and what are temptations from the enemy. So now, during the Easter season, we'll continue going through the, the second half of these rules. So we, we pick up with St. Ignatius's eighth rule. And his eighth rule is fairly short. It goes like this. Let him who is in desolation labor to be in patience, which is contrary to the vexations which come to him. And let him think that he will soon be consoled, employing against the desolation the devices in the sixth rule. So there's, there's two main points that Ignatius points out to us. And the first one is that the key virtue for the time where we're feeling this kind of desolation, being apart from God, the key virtue is patience. And I think that fits very well with, you know, the strangeness of our situation today. We have to practice patience maybe even more than usual. Patience with having to isolate ourselves for this unknown amount of time. Patience with not being able to work or function in many of the ways that we really want to. Patience with each other, as maybe you spend more time you know, in close quarters with your family members. St. Peter in the second reading says that for now, a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials. Various trials, very true. But when we're going through these trials, and we may at times feel a kind of interior heaviness, kind of desolation, we must not just simply give up. Because that's one of the pressures of desolation, just to, to give up. Patience means not giving up when everything else seems to be pushing me to do so. Stay the course during times of spiritual heaviness. I might not have the kind of energy, maybe, for prayer or to, to reach out to serve my spouse or my children, but work for patience. Keep going. And this, of course, includes patience and for all of us waiting to return to Mass and to be able to receive our Lord in Holy Communion. And this weekend here at St. Boniface, we were supposed to have had First Communion for a number of our children. It's another moment of, of disappointment. After all the preparation and getting ready, as we're looking forward to welcoming, welcoming them to being able to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So during this time, we all have to have patience and waiting to receive our Lord again. And this virtue of patience can actually help us grow in a greater longing for the Eucharist and a deeper appreciation for the wonderful gift that God has given to us. You know, it's been just over a month now of this in our area. And uh, even for myself, you know, while we've gotten down, you know, for the most part, aspects of how to do all of the online content, how to live stream mass, it does, there's just this kind of weight upon me as well. You know, I'd much rather have all of you here in person, but I must be patient. Stay the course until we can gather together again. So the first part of his eighth rule is to strive for patience. And the second part, Ignatius says, is that while in desolation, 
to think that you will soon be consoled again. Desolation does not last forever. God's consolations will return. You know, one of the lies that the enemy will bring to our mind when we're feeling separated from God during times of desolation is that things are always going to be this way, that there's no hope of it ever being different again. But the truth is that consolation will return, and it will return a lot sooner than the desolation makes us think possible. And to help us think that we will be consoled, he says that in this eighth rule, we're to persevere in the different practices that we learned about in the sixth rule. If we remember back to that, that was spending time in prayer, meditation, examination, and small acts of penance. So if we just look at one of those again, meditation, meditation especially on the scriptures like what we have today. And looking at our gospel, I'm sure that when the apostles had seen Jesus arrested this uh, week or so ago, that when he was tortured and, and killed and, and buried, that they were thrown down into the darkness of desolation. Jesus was dead. What could undo that? How could consolation ever return to them now that the master had died? But in reality, consolation returned and overcame the darkness sooner than they thought when on the third day Jesus rose again and began to appear to them. Peace be with you, Jesus says to them and to us in the gospel today. Peace be with you to overcome the desolation in their hearts. We also hear of, of Thomas in the gospel that he wasn't there for Jesus' first appearance, and so he had difficult believing. Such was the, that kind of desolation, darkness within him. But then Jesus, a week later, appears to him as well. Peace be with you. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. My Lord, my God. Listen again to that line that I gave us earlier from St. Peter in the second reading. Now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials. So trials, yes, but for a little while. When we're in desolation, we feel like we're always going to be like this. But looking back upon our lives, we can see that that's not true. We're not always in that kind of state. Desolation won't last forever. Consolations and desolations come and go throughout our lives. These are those ups and downs that I was speaking of. And two, we, there's the kind of a tranquil time where maybe we don't especially feel consolations, but we're not in a kind of desolation either. When we go forward calmly in the service of God. So during this time, work for patience. Knowing that desolation does not last forever, consolation will return. I want to end the homily with some wonderful words of St. Teresa of Avila. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God does not change. Patience achieves everything. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God is enough.